Welcome to Bible Link. It's great to see you. Bible Link exists to help link the Bible to life, real life, your life. And in chapter 9, God gives the same command again to be fruitful and multiply. He gives it twice, actually. He tells Noah that people can eat meat now, so it must be drained of blood. Now, blood is highly symbolic in the Bible. It represents life. And God says that life belongs to him, and we should return it to him instead of trying to take it for ourselves by consuming it. We should not shed blood lightly in regard to people and even animals. God doesn't like needless killing in any respects. This knowledge helps us when it comes to understanding Jesus Christ calling the cup of the Lord's Supper his blood. In a symbolic and mysterious way, we take on Jesus' life. Passages like this also help explain why people get freaked out when Jesus talked about people drinking his blood and eating his flesh in the Gospel of John. That's a forbidden thing by God in their, in their value system. Do we value life in the same way God does? We live in a culture where there's a lot of senseless killing and death of both people and animals. God says we must ultimately give account to him for the life and lives we take. God gives the covenant of the rainbow here as a visible reminder of God's promise not to flood the earth again. And then the story takes kind of a strange and really dark turn. Noah plants a vineyard and gets drunk. There are a lot of parallels with the original creation story here. Noah, like Adam, was a worker of the soil, and Noah, like Adam, gets in trouble after doing something bad with fruit and ends up naked. And then Noah, like Adam, ends up in a family conflict after his sin and nakedness. And there's some speculation about what Ham's sin was. Was it only to see his father in nakedness? Some scholars think he may have committed incest with either the father or mother, though that's far-reaching from what we have in the text. The Bible usually gives us the nitty-gritty details. At the very least, Ham gets in trouble by spreading the word about his dad's nakedness and disgracing him, in contrast to other two sons who covered their father's nakedness. Ham fails to honor his father, and that was a big deal back in the ancient Near East. He didn't keep his tongue in check. What's interesting about this passage is that God remains silent throughout this entire family shakeup. No comment is made about Noah getting drunk. He curses Ham's son, Canaan, instead of Ham, who actually did the deed, and also Noah is the one pronouncing the curse here, not God. The two nations that descend from Shem and Canaan are very important as the story of the Bible unfolds. Shem is the ancestor of Israel, and Israel and Canaan fight against each other constantly, foreshadowing the occurring in Noah's blessing and curses. Do we fail to honor our parents by shaming them? They're humans, and they mess up sometimes, and we don't have to run them into the ground when they do it. We don't have to air out all their failures and struggles to everyone. Family conflict shapes us profoundly. Are we bringing health into our families, or are we furthering it, their dysfunction? Ham also gossiped about his dad by broadcasting his shame. Sharing the skeletons in people's closets can do a lot of damage to people. Gossip hurts families, it destroys friendships, and it rips apart churches. Is there some stuff you need to keep secret? Are there things people have told us in confidence that we are bleeding out to others? Are we wise in the boundaries we keep, knowing who we can share with and who we can't? What else did you notice? Thanks for engaging in Bible Link today. Join the conversation on Facebook. Ask some questions. Share your observations here below and invite someone to join us next time.